Hello, Potato. Yep, you can see we're doing story time again because I can't do rock and paper and not do scissors, right? That's right, the next week was scissors. Rock, paper, and scissors. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to do too much talking before this one before we leap right into it. I will say that, like I said yesterday, this has been quite the learning experience trying to do these. Um, as you may have guessed watching the wonderful quality product that usually turn out, I tend to do these in one take. I don't do a lot of, uh, don't do a lot of editing. So doing stories requires a ton of editing because I don't want to have the video show me saying the same line six times in a row and not getting it right. Like, you know, I normally do. But, yeah, that's the challenge I took on to myself, right? So yes, without further ado, we're going to finish the Rock, Paper, Scissors trifecta with another tale but originally written for Clever Fiction. So please gather around the fire and listen to me tell you a tale. The Sisterhood of the Hinged Blade Hey! The young girl called across the diner, snapping her fingers to get the waitresses and nearly everyone else's attention. I need my bill now! I'll be with you in just a moment, ma'am, the waitress calls back with a smile before turning back to the couple whose order she's in the middle of taking. I'm in a hurry, the girl calls. You need to get over here now. Go ahead, says the balding middle-aged man. We're not in a hurry. The girl yells, That's mighty big of you, asshole! This causes the couple of people who weren't already staring to turn and look, too. Y'all can just mind your own damn business. You ain't better than me to look at me like you are. The waitress nods her thanks to the couple and crosses over to the young girl. What can I do for you? She asks with a tight-lipped smile. Give me my bill. I got places to be. The waitress reaches in her apron and pulls out her ticket book. She tears off the young girl's ticket and places it on the table before her. She starts to turn back to the other table when the woman shouts again. Where are you going? You're helping me. The waitress turns to see the girl is now waving a credit card. She turns back, picks up the check, and then reaches for the card. The woman flicks the plastic at the waitress. It bounces off the server's chest and falls to the floor at her feet. You better pick that up, the girl orders. The waitress's smile tightens even more, causing her lips to completely disappear. She stoops down and picks up the card from the floor. I'll be right back, ma'am, she says politely, if not warmly. Damn right you will. When the waitress returns to the card and the receipt, the girl snatches it out of her hand and begins checking it. The waitress maintains her tight smile, but does not say anything before turning away and going back to the couple she had been helping. Rude bitch, the girl says in a stage whisper, loud enough for most people in the restaurant to hear it. The girl confirms her total on the receipt and writes it right above her signature. On the tip line, she scrawls, fuck you, instead of an actual gratuity. She then wads at the slip and smacks it loudly down onto the table. Head held high, the girl slides out of the booth and walks to the door. She slams the glass door open and walks out into the cold night. She doesn't notice the older woman in the black coat rise from her seat at the counter, where she leaves a $50 bill as payment for the single cup of coffee she'd been nursing for the last hour. The girl stalks down the street. She comes across a ragged, bearded man sitting on the cold pavement. He has a handwritten cardboard sign reading, Iraq veteran, out of work, please help, God bless you, propped on his lap, and a dirty Apollo coffee cup on the sidewalk next to him. She makes a point of kicking over his cup, scattering the loose change in it over the sidewalk. Hey! The homeless man protests. Get a job, fucking leech! The girl says and spits on him before walking on. She still fails to notice the woman walking about a half a block behind her. The woman stops the homeless veteran, who has gathered up most of his spilled change, and hands him a $20 bill. Thank you for your service, she says and continues on. When she's about halfway through the alley, a voice calls from behind her. That's quite the chip you have on your shoulder there, it says. The girl turns to look at the woman in the black coat. Now I know you ain't talking to me. Oh, but I am, she replies, her voice calm and kindly. You better mind your own business, you old cow. The girl turns and starts down the alley again, walking faster than before. But this is my business, she says, still calm, still pleasant. Felony Birch, only 27 and already so cold and jaded. The girl stops and turns. She arches her eyebrows and asks, how do you know my name? The older woman smiles and runs her right hand through her long white hair and starts walking toward her again. Do you realize how rare it is to find someone who is truly well-mannered? We use the term common decency, but we really shouldn't. 
It's inaccurate at best. There's nothing common about decency anymore. What are you, one of those Jesus freaks can tell me to wash my fucking mouth or I'm going to hell? The old woman chuckles. No, nothing like that. You are free to do whatever you like, but you should understand that there are consequences for your behavior. Yeah, Santa ain't coming to my house this year. Boo-hoo, Felony sneers. Now answer my damn question. How do you know my name? I know a lot about you, the woman says. I know that you had a rough childhood. I know that your mother was a drug addict and you don't even know who your father is. I know that you fought hard to make it where you are in life, to not follow your mother into an early grave with a needle sticking out of your arm. It is unfortunate that in your struggle to better your place in the world, you have chosen to not better yourself as a person. In fact, you have chosen to make the world a worse place for others. I ain't worried about nobody but me. The older woman ignores her. That poor waitress, for example. Did you know that servers make less than minimum wage? There was nothing wrong with the service she gave you. She was rude. She didn't even speak to me when she finally came back with my card. She took your abuse and never completely lost her smile. She does that every day. Most people aren't as bad as you. Most aren't bad at all. But the ones that are, well, I don't see how she manages to get out of bed every morning to face that. I couldn't. It's her damn job to serve me. True, but she was your server, not your servant. You didn't even give her a tip. I saw what you wrote down. That one last bit of abuse to a poor girl who spent time on you that she could have spent on someone who would reward her service with a decent gratuity. Nobody gives me a tip, Felony protests. If she wants to make better money, she should get a better job. And the homeless man. You could have just ignored him, but you didn't. Screw him! He's probably even a vet. Just some damn drug addict trying to steal my taxes. You spit on him, the woman says. You kicked over his money, and then you spit on him. That's a special kind of rude, wouldn't you say? Okay, Miss Manners, I get your point. I'll go to my room without dessert and think about what I did, okay? No, it's not, the white-haired woman replies. Are you familiar with Morai? Isn't she a singer? The woman smiles at Felony. No, dear. They were a trio of women in Greek mythology. I'll look them up on Wikipedia. No, you won't, the woman in the black coat says matter-of-factly. Her voice is still kind, but her smile is gone. They essentially issued our lives to us. Clotho would spin the thread of life, and Lachesis would measure them out, allotting each of us how much time we had to live. Fascinating. Then there was Atropo, the inevitable. It is... She that we sort of follow. We are the sisterhood of the hinged blade. The old woman reaches into her coat and pulls out a pair of scissors, not gleaming silver, but old and dark. Scissors that may be beyond an antique and actually be ancient. Ancient, but well cared for. Felony starts to back away. Atropo would use her scissors to cut the thread, thus determining the time and manner of each person's death. Some cast her as evil for doing that, for essentially killing each of us. But it was only her job, her duty to the world. The older woman steps towards Felony. Get the hell away from me, Felony curses, fear tinging the edge of her anger. We of the Sisterhood feel that Atropo perhaps gave people a little too much thread, the sort of people who make the world a worse place just by them living in it. So it is our duty to give those who deserve it a little trim. The older woman striked forward with her scissors, faster than Felony can react. The blade snapped shut inches from the young woman's face. You know the thing about cutting a thread? You can never uncut it. Once your thread has been cut, it's cut. I'm sorry. I know you tried so hard to be the success your name doomed you to not be. But in that effort, you forgot to be a better person. Now you will be nothing but another crime statistic. Perhaps, maybe in your death, someone else will remember the fragility of life, and the next time they wish to hurt someone, they won't. You're crazy, bitch! Felony screams and turns. She's shocked to see another figure standing behind her, a woman, her age rendered indeterminate by the cloak that hides her face in shadow. She's holding a pair of old scissors of her own. These ones are open so that Felony can see the sharpened edges. But Felony gasps, but before she can make another noise, the cloaked woman drives her scissors forward against the young woman's throat and snaps them shut. Blood sprays out as the blades cut through flesh and muscle, leaving dark splotches on the other woman's cloak. The blood is already flowing in her lungs as she tries to breathe. Felony grabs at her severed throat as the scissors pull away. Blood flows around her fingers as she staggers back into the older woman. The woman from the diner takes Felony's shoulder in her hand. Shh, shh, child. It's almost over. The pain will be over soon. As Felony's legs give out, the second woman grabs her other shoulder, and together, the two sisters help lower the young woman gently to the ground, and stay with her as the light of life fades from her eyes. When her heart stills, the older woman gently shuts her eyes. The sisters stow their blades back under their coat and cloak respectively, before calmly leaving the alley.
All right, so that completes the rock, paper, scissors trifecta from 2013. I wrote the story in 2013, and now you have heard it too. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it doesn't sound too horrible. And I hope that I will see you in the next video. The girl confirms her total...